Do you know that a piezo material can deform when subjected to an electric field? Here I have a parallel beam of stack. Two layers of ceramics are surrounding one copper central layer. But how it works? The ceramic is piezoelectric because of its crystal structure, called ABO3. This structure lacks a center of symmetry and is therefore polarizable. If you deform the material, it generates an electric field and conversely, applying an electric field deforms the material. In this video, I will show you how to use this kind of piezo to close an aperture creating pulses of gas. The reason why I'm using this kind of material is that you can control the frequency of the vibrations and it can reach the kilohertz. But pay close attention to the resonance. When the driving frequency equals the natural frequency, you can totally lose the control. It is the same phenomenon than the Tacoma narrow bridge. At the resonance, the piezo element experiences maximum amplitude vibrations and can lead to uncontrollable motion. The first natural resonant frequency can be written like this, where L is the length of the piezo. So if you use a long piezo, the resonance can occur at lower frequency. Piezoelectric ceramic are polarized during manufacturing by applying a strong electric field while the material is heated above its Curie temperature. As it cools, the electric dipoles align with the field resulting in permanent polarization. For my application, I connected the piezo like this and I have this polarization. A constant minus 200 volt is applied to the above layer whereas the copper layer switch from 0 volts to minus 200 volts. The other ceramic layer is grounded. When the copper layer is at 0 volt, there is an electric field going from the positive to the negative potential that is created. This contracts the ceramic dipoles and creates a bending. Then, when it switches to minus 200 volts, there is now an electric field in the bottom layer. This generates a bending in the other direction. Two other important parameters of this piezo are the deflection and the blocking force. For my application, the piezo has to open against a high pressure gas, so the blocking force should be high enough to open the valve. The deflection should also be optimized for a good opening, and D31 is the charge piezoelectric constant depending on your material. To measure the deflection, I glued a mirror on a piezo and used a laser. The idea is to measure small movements using simple trigonometry. I switch the potential of the center copper layer using push-pull switches. I'm using a delay generator to control the frequency. With a pulsing voltage of 200 volts, the maximum deflection I can get at the position of the mirror is 0.63 mm. You can place a photodiode and a pinhole to record the signal. In orange, you have the TTL signal coming from my delay generator, and in blue, the signal of my photodiode. You can see that the signals are corresponding in time. Coming back to my application, I want to use the piezo to pulse a valve and therefore I fix the piezo on the moving piston. This piston can move to adjust the position of the piezo in front of an aperture. I have a high pressure gas coming from the right and I pulse the piezo material. There is an o-ring glued on the piezo to secure the ceiling of the small aperture. The copper layer is connected to a pulsed voltage and the ceramic layer above to a constant voltage. Remember that the bottom ceramic layer is grounded. My distance L now is the distance between my o-ring and the plastic clamp. To fit into the valve, I had to cut the piezo, changing its properties. The initial piezo is 40 mm long, and I have the properties given by the manufacturer. When I glued the mirror on the piezo, I measured a smaller deflection. However, when I scaled this value to 40 mm, I found 1.9 mm, a value really close from the one given by the manufacturer. When I cut the piezo for the valve, I reduced the deflection a lot. However, the blocking force increases, which is good because it has to open against a high pressure. 
The blocking force is the maximum force the piezo can generate when its displacement is blocked. The first resonant frequency also increases. It allows me to work at a higher frequency and keep the control. I will quickly finish with the electrical circuit. You have the push-pull switch and the TTL signal coming from the delay generator. Capacitors are used to reduce any voltage sag from the power supply. The piezo itself is acting also as a capacitor. If the power supply cannot deliver enough current, the piezo will never fully charge. Here I measure the voltage at the output when the piezo is not connected. Then there isn't any problem, but when I connect the power supply and the piezo, it can struggle to deliver enough current to charge the piezo. One way to solve the problem is of course use a power supply that can deliver enough current, but you can also increase the capacitance of these small capacitors. Thanks to the piezo, I have now a pulsed valve in a vacuum chamber. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments. It can be about the crystal structure or even about the electrical connections and don't forget to subscribe.